Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Film It Cuts, Sunshine and Lollipops, Volume 1, Short Stories by Ollie Jacobs. Before I get into this too much, I'm just going to point out I'm going to be using a new uh, sort of editing and filming style, so you guys let me know in the comments if you enjoy that. This is also the latest instalment of Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along, which I host in conjunction with Todd the Librarian, so definitely check out his channel. And uh, as always, I'm going to get started by reading you the blurbs. So, a blogger turning into a zombie. A child that won't stop eating. An obsessive compulsive with disastrous tics. These are just a shade of what lurks inside the pages of Sunshine and Lollipops, the first volume in Ollie Jacobs' film it cuts short story collections. Covering a range of genres from horror to western to something utterly indescribable, these 15 tales will shock, surprise and occasionally make you chortle. So, as you probably gathered from the blurb there, this is a collection of short stories. And what's interesting about this collection is that all of the short stories actually kind of still stand out to me. I'm not going to talk to you about every one of them because some of them are just maybe a page and a half long. But, you know, it's, it's not one of those where, you know, sometimes you read a short story collection, you get to the end. And by the end, you can't remember what the first few stories were about. And uh, that's not the case here. I finished reading this a couple of days ago. And some of the, some of the ideas behind the stories in particular are kind of still sticking out in my head. This does have some of the problems you potentially would expect from an indie novel, so uh, the formatting isn't perfect, so for example, I would like it to have been justified, there is uh, spacing between the paragraphs, uh, no page numbers, no uh, page headers or anything like that, and uh, there are also occasionally spelling and grammar mistakes, at one point there was the wrong use of the words uh, there and there, so just to bear that in mind as you go, however, Normally I would like duck points off a book if I spotted that, but I enjoyed this so much that I'm, I'm still going to give it the rating I'll, I will give it at the end so you can uh, stick around for that. So let's dive into some of the different short stories. So, so the first story in this collection is called Eye Zombie and it's basically written in the form of a series of blog posts during a zombie outbreak. The person who's writing the posts contracts the zombie virus and we sort of see life as a zombie from the inside there. We have uh, uh, Standoff, which is this more kind of Western inspired one about kind of a group of desperate, desperate men who are kind of cornered inside a house with the law outside. What else have we got? He's a growing lad. I enjoyed that one. That's about a kid who basically keeps on eating and just can't stop eating. And that one almost reminded me of uh, something, you know, a Roald Dahl story or something like that. I hate my body and my body hates me. So this one's an interesting one because it kind of touches on um, eating disorders and uh, body perception, body dysmorphia, that kind of thing. I think it was a brave move to try and write about that and I think it worked really well here. We have The Writer Writes, which is a really interesting one that kind of reflects this kind of obsession we have as a society of looking at, you know, say somebody commits a terror attack, we all want to read the manifesto and it gets published in newspapers and, um, you know, people are quick to blame horror films and horror movies if kids really like horror movies and then go on to do something terrible. This kind of turns it the other way around and for me as a writer as well, it does make you think about how where, where the line is, you know, between creating evil things in your head and and actually bringing them out into the world, you know? We have the detention room, which was almost Twilight Zone. He basically a school teacher is having trouble disciplining the kids. He makes a deal with, uh, well, I think you can guess who he makes a deal with. And basically, it turns this detention room into something where if you put a kid in there for five seconds, they come out changed. But he's warned never to put them in there for longer than five seconds. And... Uh, Predictably bad things happen, you know. We have Xavian, which is just a strange one. I'm not even going to try and cover that. Uh, Coma was an interesting one as well. This reminded me almost of uh, Marabou Sp uh, Stalk Nightmares by Irvin Welsh, and that is written from the point of view of a coma victim. And uh, right at the end here is where we have Strange Days in High Wycombe Part 1, which is an excerpt of a, uh, a full novel that he's written, uh, which I've also previously read, although I don't think I've reviewed it on this channel. So all in all, I mean, each of these stories has something you can take from it. Sometimes it's kind of something philosophical that you can think about. Sometimes it's just the entertainment value. Sometimes it's just the shock value, you know. But despite the fact that, as I say, there are some sort of spelling and grammar mistakes, some copy editing mistakes that could have been improved, really, it still is a really fantastic read. I would say, arguably, that Jacobs is better at writing short stories than uh, long-form fiction. So I've already read a fair old few of Ollie's books as well, and I would say this is up there definitely in the top sort of 20%, which, considering I've read about 10 of them, that puts it up there and around about the top number two position. So make of that as uh, what you will. 
rating time, I'm going to give it a pretty solid 4 out of 5. I would definitely recommend it. Um, not just if you're into horror, but if you're into horror, there's definitely something for you here. But like it says on the blurb, it does cover all of these different genres. And uh, all in all, I was uh, pretty impressed by it. And it was a decent indie read. Might even make it into my top quarter, uh, top 10 books of the quarter. We'll see. So there we have it. That's what I thought of Film It Cuts, Sunshine and Lollipops by Ollie Jacobs. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you're going to be picking up a copy of this book. I'll be back next month with another indie book as part of the uh, Todd and Danes indie read along. Feel free to join in if you'd like to. All you need to do is read at least one indie book a month. Uh, you can post a video about it if you'd like to. If not, you can just let us know in the comments. Speaking of the comments, uh, say things. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Actually, uh, let me know what your thoughts are on this kind of new type of format as well. Hit subscribe if you're new here and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.